2021 Queer Experience. We're here to help. We know just what to do. At Century 21, we're professional. We're the neighborhood professionals for you. We've got to know our own real estate to get the job done. We give you all we've got. Number one. At Century 21. We're professional, Daddy. We're the neighborhood professionals for you. Meet Rocky, Friday, 7.30. I'm John Stossel, and I'm going to tell you about something you should be doing for your pet this winter, because more pets are being injured because new chemicals are being used on the streets. I'll also tell you about this remarkable new detergent green. It's remarkable because it's gotten hundreds of people arrested. I committed a crime, okay. I mean, what do you want me to do, cry? I mean, there are plenty of nice, quiet people sitting at home you'd never figure are doing this. I'll also tell you about a bank where you deposit sperm. Had he gone to a sperm bank, he could have picked from numerous possibly handsome fathers. If you want the father of your child to be a tall Hungarian Jew, a short American black, they've got the sperm here. This man is a donor. It is sort of a vicarious pleasure to know there may be individuals who were conceived with me as one of the parents. And the government says these pill bottles are supposed to be childproof. So we have assembled a test panel here, a scientific panel of four-year-olds who are going to test them for us. Stay with us. <laughs> Hundreds of children have been killed popping aspirins because they thought there was something good to eat. So some time ago, the Consumer Product Safety Commission ordered that aspirin and some other products be packaged in child-proof containers. Now, some of these things, I think, are pretty adult-proof. I have trouble with them. But we wondered how well the kids would do. So I am passing out to each of our carefully selected test panel here three of these containers. And we'll be checking back with them later in the broadcast to see how well they do. Go ahead, try to open these things. In a moment, we'll be back to tell you about winterizing your dog, the great breen fraud, and freezing sperm. Bored with the same old vacation? Join the Bowery and see the world. Good show, Yank. There's a fascinating world out here, and most anyone can afford it. Here's the ticket. A Bowery savings account. It pays more on passbook savings than commercial banks, and it's more reliable than stocks. That's how to get money for travel. It pays to save at the Bowery. <laughs> it's like my mother always told me, get what you want, but get it at Wallbounds. I know how good my quality meets taste. But you have to see how good Wallbaum's prices look. I get up pretty early to keep up with Wallbaum's customers. As it goes out, as fast as it comes in. The most important thing to remember about fresh produce is Wallbaum's. At Wallbaum's, more than the price is right. Wallbaum's, a part of every good meal. We've been using new chemicals along with salt to clear the streets of snow, which is terrific for everyone except for pets, because the chemicals dry out and crack the pads on an animal's foot. Not only that, when the animal tries to clean his, fe his feet, he swallows the chemicals, and that's been causing stomach injuries. So, the world's largest animal hospital actually suggests that your dog should wear something like these stupid-looking <laughs> booties on his feet. My assistant here is Fido. He's an Afghan puppy. 11 weeks old. Now, if the boots are too much for you or your dog to take, the hospital suggests that you should at least wash the dog's feet when he comes inside. Now, moving right along. Whoops, don't go away. Here's a revolutionary new laundry product, Breen, clean with Breen. What's most revolutionary about Breen is that it does not exist. There is no such product. Yet thousands of merchants claim they sold Breen and now many of them are being arrested for their claims. But I'm getting ahead of myself. What this story is really about is coupons. Good Living starts Wednesday in the New York Daily News. It's the day to cut out all those incredible money-saving coupons. 
Do you use coupons? Yeah, I use all the coupons I can. My wife has an envelope full of them. <laughs> I don't say no more. I don't use them. I think it's a waste of time. They raise the prices. You see this? Now, I thought most people felt that way, but when WCBS's Arnold Diaz reported how Mary Ann Hayes of New Jersey frequently used coupons to knock $50 off her food bills, 70,000 people wrote in to ask how she did it. Coupons are good for the store. You get the face value, 10 cents here, plus a five cent handling charge. They're good for the food company because coupons bribe you to try new products. I don't really need it, but if they want me to try it, I have to have an advantage. The only losers, we who don't use coupons, because we pay higher food bills to support all this coupon activity. And now it seems we pay even more because people cheat. Stores can cheat by turning coupons in without selling the product. Sometimes they run out and buy extra papers. A paper, after all, only costs a quarter, and you may get up to $4 worth of coupons inside. They tear them out, handle them roughly so they look consumer handled. Sometimes they run them through a clothes dryer and then turn them in for refunds. And now the cheating has gone big time. Organized rings of coupon thieves pocketing $300 million a year throughout the country. And I understand the greatest single concentration is here within my county. All right, we have a, a $300 million fraud. It's big time fraud. Here Queens detectives, organized crime specialists, prepare for a bust. All right, team one will be uh, supervised by Sergeant Thorry. The result of the bust? Dozens arrested, thousands of dollars in coupons recovered. These packages they got busting the owner of this newsstand in Flushing. The detectives had tricked him by posing as coupon buying crooks and arrested him, they say, as he was about to sell them $75,000 worth of coupons. He wasn't eager to talk to me about it. Where did he get them? I save lots of money with coupons, dollars and dollars galore. There's a thief in the Astoria Daily News plant, suspect police, but they don't know who it is. Every week there are six million coupons hit New York City streets, supposedly in your newspapers, but only three million hit the street. The other three million are hitting to supply people like me and other, you know, frauds. This man is one of the crooks. They caught on to him through Breen, the non-existent detergent. Postal inspectors ran a coupon ad for Breen in the Daily News, the Star Ledger, and Newsday. The ad ran only one day. Yet within weeks, almost 3,000 stores sent in Breen coupons, claiming they'd sold Breen and they wanted their fee. Who pays for this kind of fraud? The company has to charge somebody for their loss, and John Q. Public gets to charge, as usual. Many of those indicted for redeeming Breen are owners of stores, like these here. They allegedly just added extra coupons to the ones they got legally. And it's not just a few coupons. Redeeming Breen got the Greenberg grocery charged with larceny of $29,000. Most amazing is that many people arrested don't even own stores. One demand for refunds came from this house in Woodside. The Adela Yabor Market turned out to be an apartment in this Regal Park building. How can this be? Don't the companies check? The only way they check is if you get greedy. For two years, nobody checked, called, nothing. Nobody you never did nothing. checked on your phony store? You just sent in the coupons? I had my house. I had my store. I had two of my friends' houses. I had my mother's house. I had my father-in-law's house. There was weeks that I've cleared $1,800 from one address. And the fact that the retailer is cheating, did you say, or stealing? This man is vice president of Nielsen, the world's largest coupon clearinghouse. Most manufacturers don't want to bother handling their coupons, so they hire companies like Nielsen to do it for them. And one of the valuable things you do for the companies is to catch cheaters. Yes, we do. That's a crock of bull. He the has a point in that it's profitable up. for the clearinghouses when people cheat. The more cheating, the more coupons they handle, and they're paid per coupon handled. If people cheat, you're paid anyway. In fact, you make more money the more cheating there is, so what do you care? It's only me who's losing. How long do you think a manufacturer would use our service if we didn't protect their interests? We send out credit agencies to check every bona fide retailer that we have on pack in our file. These companies say no way. They send out detectives to check very little. And why was I not caught for two and a half years? And why do I have six addresses going? They don't get a dime of money from Clinton, Iowa. Ask them how come I got checks from Nielsen. He was small time, stealing several hundred a week. In California, two men had 14 fictitious retail organizations. They were receiving $300,000 per month. $300,000 stolen from us. 
You have to give the other one, the 16 ounce. This is 32 ounce. Yeah. Or an equivalent amount of any larger size. And while we were in the store, fighting for every penny, the crooks were perfecting their technique. I'd be willing to say I'm the best in the world. At what? At what I do. What do you mean? Nobody ever checked on me when I did my work. Never. Because you clipped them so well. Yeah. First of all, you never cut it like this because it looks too perfect. Each coupon has to look like it's handled. And what's the purpose of doing all that? The purpose of this is so when they open up the envelope, they say, this isn't mass done. This was in somebody's pocket. Look at this thing. Then I address the envelope as John Stossel Market or John Stossel Superette. I could do it. You could do it. I could do it. She could do it. We all can do it. Try me. Send me some coupons. Didn't you ever open a Sunday paper and find that there was no sheet in there? Yeah, I don't get Yet mine. somebody else had a sheet and you didn't? Well, where do you think that sheet is? Well, I never know where they find these treasures. <laughs> I always have to pay every penny. Do you use those? No, no, I, I don't. How come? Well, I don't get any. <laughs> that sheet never touched your paper. That sheet went that to you, and went... you were making money off of it. That's right. You don't seem to feel bad about any of this. I mean, you were, you were cheating me and everybody else, making food cost more for us. I committed a crime, OK. I mean, what do you want me to do, cry? I mean, there are plenty of nice, quiet people sitting at home you'd never figure are doing this. When the majority of people see a quick buck, they don't turn away from it. Good eating, good health, and a good life. And uh, don't forget your scissors. Well, before you consider trying this, we're told the postal authorities have retired Breen, and to catch new cheaters, they've prepared a new imaginary coupon. We'll be back in a moment. Any naughty taxpayers, Smedley? No, sir. They've acquired money. Money? Five money magazine guides, free with Canon's P10D. Free money? Yes, sir. And they can check their entries on plain paper tape or display, even a memory. It's going to be dull, sir. Hmm. What do we have on our Canon P10D? Canon's P10D puts you in the money for tax season. It's like my mother always told me, get what you want, but get it at Wallbaum's. The most important thing to remember about fresh fruits and vegetables is Wallbaum's. You'll find a lot in this deli, and there's a deli in almost every Wallbaum's, and there's a Wallbaum's near you. If you think Wallbaum's prices are something special, wait till you see our selection. At Wallbaum's, more than the price is right. Wallbaum's, a part of every good meal. Where can you find 220 low-priced new and country-fresh used cars all indoors? At White Plains Ford. Here are just some of the incredible bargains this week. A 75 Granada for just $22.95. A 77 Malibu Wagon for just $28.95. And a 76 Mustang Cobra for just $24.95. These low used car prices are protected by rain check and include a seven-day return policy and a two-year unlimited mileage service contract. Only at White Plains Ford. Exit 8 off the Cross Westchester Expressway. When Edison's light bulb was turning America on in the 1880s, Moore & Schley, Cameron & Company was a brokerage firm advising investors. For current market trends, send for a free copy of our extensive three-in-one research report. Moore & Schley, Cameron & Company. Today's methods for today's markets for 99 years. Moving along to awards time. The Stossel Award for the most gall in advertising this week goes to the Carter Wallace Company. Carter Wallace is a big drug company that also sells pregnancy, home pregnancy test kits. Here's their ad for Answer. The home pregnancy test kit you can use with confidence. Highly reliable results nine days after you expected your period. You won't feel insecure when you test with Answer. Well, Carter Wallace also sells equipment to doctors, and it doesn't want to make the doctors mad, so it also runs ads in health and doctors' magazines that say, in effect, just the opposite. It says, you should leave testing in the hands of the professionals. Think twice, it says, before taking a pregnancy test in your own hands. Carter Wallace does not put its name on either ad. This ad says Wampole Labs, this one Diagnostic Testing Company, but both are made by Carter Wallace. We did do some research, by the way, and we found that the pregnancy tests do work, 
but they're not as accurate as a real doctor's examination. Now, speaking of becoming pregnant, we all know we came to be when one day one tiny sperm reached an egg and fertilized it. Now, this is somewhat of a fluke. I mean, most of the time the sperm never gets to the egg, which is pretty amazing because look at this. During intercourse, 100 million sperm are typically released. As you can see here, they're pretty active. They swim around, they, they, they swim around energetically. However, they aren't very smart. Nearly all of them get lost on the way to the egg. Or of those that find it, most can't break through the egg's protective coating. All of which makes it very important, if you want to have a child, that you have a high sperm count. But some men don't. Now, here's an example of someone with a low sperm count. And as you can see, they aren't as active as in the other example. This has no effect on that person's masculinity or on his ability to enjoy sex. But it probably means his sperm would not ever reach an egg. And that brings us to our story. Do you want to have a baby? What if you try and fail? This couple tried six years. Finally, he went to the doctor and learned he had too low a sperm count. It did bother me. I mean, you feel like you're not a full man. What are your choices in this situation? Do you adopt? Not easy. The waiting list for adoption is about five years. Yet this couple did have their own baby. What they did was go to a doctor who just asked one of his students to be the father. For 35 bucks, that student donated semen, which the doctor put inside the woman, and now there is a three-year-old boy. The three of you are keeping your faces away from the Society camp. does have sick people, and I'm utterly not ashamed of what we've done, but I don't want my son to pay the price for sick minds. Artificial insemination. This doctor does about 10 a year. He picks the donors himself. We will use medical students generally, and uh, most patients are happy about that. Great pains are taken to keep the donor anonymous. He will never go to the doctor's office. He will never meet nor learn the name of the woman who will get his sperm. You don't care who it is. You're not, you're not curious walking around the community thinking any of these men you see could be your no. child's father. Don't even think about it. The child doesn't look like him, but does resemble the mother. I'm glad, he says, because I'm a brute, a typical trucker. I there guys that are handsome. I'm just average. And so you're glad that the donor who must helped have been, create... Must have been a good-looking person. Had he gone to a sperm bank, he could have picked from numerous possibly handsome fathers. If you want the father of your child to be a tall Hungarian Jew, a short American black, a blue-eyed Scandinavian, they've got the sperm here. We even have different categories of Indians. We've even supplied a request for uh, an Eskimo. And they pride themselves on picking donors who look like the husbands. You mean you, you go out on the street and you look for okay. people who <laughs> resemble him? Or? Right, people often ask that question. Most of the donors come from the universities. We get donors from Columbia, NYU, City College. And you pick people from colleges because they're assumed to be smarter? Well, we've, we've been accused of having a bias uh, towards intelligent people, and uh, we plead guilty. I guess they do look for the better people to be sperm donors. Now, this is your sperm here. You had not seen these before. No. This man is a donor. He agrees. He's smart. You think you're like a good genetic type to be I think fathering so. a lot of children? I think so. I, I probably would have moral scruples against doing it if I thought I was a genetic failure. Speaking of moral scruples, you won't show your face here. How come? Today, the whole idea of masturbation is not quite kosher in society. Why do you do it? We are compensated for it, the $20, and it is sort of a vicarious pleasure to know there may be individuals who were conceived with me as one of the parents. It's strange. It couldn't have happened in the century before this, I don't imagine. His sperm is frozen, put in canisters like these, and shipped to gynecologists all over the country. Donor inseminations are only part of the sperm bank's business. Other customers are men who think they may become sterile. For example, vasectomy patients often store their sperm here so that after the operation, they can still have children. Other customers are people who work around radiation, cancer patients getting chemotherapy, and one man who rides horses over hurdles banks his sperm here. IDENT charges 25 bucks a year for storing the sperm. When you arrive, you're taken to a private room where you deposit the sperm into a jar. They freeze it. You can come back and get it whenever you should want it. We really don't know what the limits are. What's the present. longest successful pregnancy after? Uh, 13 years. That's from Dr. Sherman from the University of Arkansas. The sperm was frozen for 13 for years. 13 put inside a woman, and she got pregnant. She got pregnant, and she had a normal child. It was a girl. That's unusual. Most children born through insemination are males. No one is sure why. 
There are almost never twins. No one knows why that is either. 13 years, by the way, was an exaggeration. We double-checked, and the real frozen pregnancy record is 10 years. But the point is that the sperm, if kept frozen, will keep indefinitely, if kept frozen. The dry ice ran out at a California sperm bank, so one of their customers, a vasectomy patient, is suing them for $5 million because they wrecked his last chance to pass on his genes. Of course, this man's child does not have his genes either, only the mother's. And that can raise legal problems. Is the child a legitimate heir, or must the father adopt him? When one woman had a child through insemination, her husband sued her for adultery. The law is hazy about all this, different in different states. Artificial insemination can also cause some psychological problems between the parents. When you have a baby, sometimes you say, my baby. If I said, I didn't want this happening to my son, he would get a little upset and say, what do you mean by your son? <laughs> you know? She contributed 80%, a donor contributed 20%. I contributed nothing, except once you have a baby, since he's one day old, as much mine as he'll ever be. When I see the outcome, I want another one. And you're going to have another oh, one, yes. or she is. Yeah. We are. All right, we've been talking here about what to do if the man is not fertile. But what if it's the woman? In Detroit, a couple where the woman is sterile has advertised for another woman to have the child for them. The response has been amazing. 400 women have asked to be the surrogate mother. Some wanted to be paid $40,000 for their trouble. Others offered to do it free, saying they just wanted to help or they, they wanted to be pregnant to know what it's like. Others said they wanted to repent for having an abortion. At any rate, the couple's attorney is now selecting a woman who will, through artificial insemination, have that couple's child. Now, this whole issue raises a lot of questions, so with us today are Dr. Joe and Roxanne Felchu, who run that sperm bank. So, if any of you in the audience have questions you'd like to ask them, please do. Anybody here? Yes. Yeah. On the average, um, how many times does a woman need to, uh, does a woman um, have to have an insemination before she becomes pregnant? The average time would be approximately three to ten times if she's perfectly normal. Three to ten times and it might be successful the first time? That's correct. Yes? I wonder if the parents ever meet their donor. If the parents the ever meet their donor. Do the parents ever meet their donor? No, definitely not. There's total anonymity. Once a donor is chosen, he's only identified by a code. A lot of people just don't approve of this. I know you would not provide us with anyone who would talk face to camera. People are very secretive about this. Well, the couples themselves are secretive because they do not want the possibility of stigma attached to the child that's born as a result. But people who adopt don't feel this way so but strongly. In this case, using artificial insemination, most parents, in fact, probably 99% of them, do not choose to tell the child that, he, that it was conceived with artificial insemination. How widespread is this practice now? Is it in full force? Are a lot of people doing this? We ship semen all over our, th this country and also to Europe and to South America. So the practice of using frozen semen for artificial insemination is quite widespread. I would say that probably no more than about 25 to 35,000 children have been born using frozen semen, but using artificial insemination, as many as 50,000 children a year are probably being born in the United States right now. Since these people don't know who they are, they could uh, marry each other and have children and, in effect, be brothers and sisters marrying. As, as a matter of fact, this is a, a theoretical possibility uh, where a gynecologist uses one or two donors in his entire practice. It's very unlikely where you have frozen semen, where you have a much larger selection of uh, donors. Thank you very much for being with us. We'll be back in a moment. I've been out at supermarkets picking up some roasters, and I... <laughs> Well, we're back here with our consumer test panel, and something amazing has happened. They managed to open almost every single one of the supposedly child-proof caps. You got them all? Calf coffee? Yeah. How about you? No. You missed one? But you got them. I got all of them. 
Well, this doesn't necessarily mean that the containers are illegal. We may have had an unusually smart test group, and we gave them some extra time, too. But oh. one part of all this is that these things are also supposed to be possible to be opened by adults. 95% of the adults are supposed to be able to open these things. Would you like to try some here? The point of this is that some people, obviously, adults too, have trouble with them. Like that one is really tough. And uh, you should know the law does say, if you have trouble with them, say if you have arthritis, you can ask the druggist to put them in a regular bottle for you, and he, he's supposed to give them to you. That's part of the law. So moving along to the mail. We always like to hear from you, and the mail always reminds me that no matter what I say, someone is going to be unhappy about it. Here's one. Dear Mr. Stossel, I was alarmed to see WCBS using the phrase, if you're not careful, you can be taken to the cleaners. You should not denigrate an entire industry by making negative remarks. It's signed by William Seitz of the Cleaners Association. I should also point out I also receive mail from gypsies complaining when I use the word gyp. Thank you for being with us. We'll be back again a month from now on the first Thursday in March. I sent away for all these things that say get rich working at home stuffing envelopes. We'll tell you what happened. Thanks for being with us.